Okay, so let's start. Let's start. We want to continue. So we want to start a new topic now. We want to start a new topic. So let me introduce it. Let me introduce it. And the topic we want to cover today is called government grants. So we want to talk about what is a government grant and how do you as a company account for government grants. Now, as an organization or as a company, you may receive an assistance from the government in terms of resources. When you receive an assistance from the government in terms of transfer of resources from them, that is what we call a government grant. So we normally define a government grant as a transfer of resources, a transfer of resources. Or it could be said, or we can say, it is an assistance by the government in form of transfer of what? Resources. Okay? So we also want to talk about what are the various types of grants that you can have as an organization or what kind of grants can the government give. But before we do that, let's put down that definition. Let's put down the definition of a government grant. Let's put down the definition of a government grants. Sam Ivy, put down this. Government grants, government grants are assistance. Government grants are assistance by the government. Government grants are assistance by the government in form of in form of transfer of resources. Government grants are assistance by the government in form of transfer of resources. Okay. So allow me now to continue from there. What we want to talk about now is types of grants. Let me introduce it first. What are the various types of grants? Now, in other words, what form of assistance can you as an organization receive from the government? One type of a grant is what we call grant relating to assets. Grant relating to assets. Listen, when you as a company receive a grant towards the purchase of an asset or construction of an asset, let's say a building, you receive an assistance from the government so that you can construct a building or you can build a road, whatever it is, that kind of assistance, we say it's a grant relating to asset. We also call it a capital grant. We also call it capital grant. In other words, when you're told to define what's a capital grant, it's a grant that relates to assets. It's a grant that you receive towards the purchase or construction of an asset. Towards the purchase or construction of an asset. That's number one. Number two, we also have what we call grant relating to grant relating to income. Grant relating to income. Let me explain it. As an organization or a company, you can receive some assistance or some grant to help you pay for the normal running expenses of your business. You receive some money to help you. You receive some money to help you pay the normal running expenses of your business. So if you are receiving such an, an assistance or money to help you meet the normal running expenses of your business, we say that is grant relating to income. We call it what we call it, we call it revenue grant. We call it revenue grant. That's another type of grant. We are calling it revenue grant. That is the grant relating to 
income grant relating to income another form of grant or another type of grant is what we call non monetary grant non monetary grant non monetary grant that's another type of grant where now the government does not give you money no instead the government will give you that asset that you are looking for maybe they will give you that building or they will give you that machinery or that motor vehicle so an unmonetary grant is the grant or an assistance you receive in form of transfer of an asset the first two you receive money grant relating to asset you receive money towards the purchase or construction of an asset that's the first one but two grant relating to income you receive money to help you pay for the normal running expenses of your business that's what we are calling revenue grant number three is what we are calling non-monetary grant when you receive an assistance from the government in terms of transfer of an asset they give you that building they give you that motor vehicle as an organization as an organization okay so these are the three different types of grant these are the three types of grants okay so before we put them down before we put them down let me talk to some students now listen there are some students here there are some students here who have joined us for the first time i know and they have not subscribed please if you have not subscribed to my youtube channel please subscribe you could also be a student and you have not subscribed to my youtube channel please subscribe to my youtube channel by clicking that subscription button just below there as you are even watching this video you can even subscribe by clicking that subscription button if you have not subscribed to my youtube channel please subscribe okay another point maybe i should mention to the students who have just joined us there are some students who are joining us for free today listen we are offering online classes we are offering online classes the online classes for financial reporting like the one we are doing if you would wish to join our online classes then you can call me we offer online classes for fr okay we also offer this is a part of the intermediate the one we are doing now we also offer advanced financial reporting if you are friends who are doing advanced financial reporting for the advanced level and we also offer financial accounting for the foundation level so if you are friends who are doing the other two which we are not covering today we are covering financial reporting so if you are friends who are doing advanced financial reporting or they are doing financial accounting of the foundation level or ATD, you can let them know that we are offering online classes. Okay. Now, if you are not able to join the live classes for any of these three, if you are not able to join live classes for any of these three, then you can buy what we call pre-recorded videos. You can buy what we call pre-recorded videos, where you get all the videos for the syllabus at once. You get all the videos for the syllabus at once. And you watch them at your own free time and you watch them at your own free time that's another way that you can deal with it so any of you who are new now or for any of your friends you can let them call me on this number 0722 65 88 75 0722 65 88 75 so I think I'm through with what I wanted to talk to the new students and to the students who have not subscribed and you are my student. Maybe you have joined, but you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Okay, Click that subscription button. Then I've said, today we are doing financial reporting. So if you have not joined officially for our online class, please join. You can call me on that number. That's what we have given. Then I've said, for some of you, you are friends who are doing advanced financial reporting or financial accounting. For more details about the online courses, you can call or even text. 
call or even text me on this number. Then I've said we have what we call pre-recorded videos for any of them. If you are not able to join live class, then you can still buy what we call pre-recorded videos. Okay. So let me continue now from where I left. Let me continue now from where I left. I was talking about the three types of government grants. The three types of government grants. Let's put them down now. Let's put them down. Then we talk about how to account for them. So have another subheading. Have another subheading. Types of government. Uh, types of grants. Types of grants. Types of grants. Types of grants. Number one. Number one. Grant relating to assets. Number one. Grant relating to assets. Grant relating to assets. In bracket. Call it capital grant. Grant relating to assets. In bracket capital grant. Capital grant. Then you say this. Below that, these are grants. These are grants. These are grants. These are grants that relate to. These are grants that relate to the patches. Maybe you can say towards. These are grants that relate to the towards the patches. These are grants, or you can say, grants received. Put it that way. These are grants received towards, these are grants received towards the purchase of an asset, towards the purchase of an asset, or, or construction, or construction of a long-term asset, or construction of a long-term asset or construction of a long-term asset these are grants received towards the purchase of an asset or to the construction of a long-term asset number two number two grants relating to income grant relating to income Grant relating to income. Then you see this. In bracket. In bracket. Revenue grant. Revenue grant. These are. These are. The grants that are received. These are the grants that are received. Towards. These are the grants that are received towards. The normal running. Towards the payment. Put it that way. Towards the payment. Towards the payment. Towards the payment. Of the normal running expenses. Of the business towards the normal running expenses of the business of the business number three number three non monetary grant non monetary grant Non monetary grant, non monetary grant, e.g., e.g., transfer of land, e.g., transfer of land and other resources, transfer of land and other resources, e.g., transfer of land and other resources e.g. transfer of land and other resources okay so let me continue from there now let me continue from there now so how do we account 
for these grounds. That's what I want to talk about now. So let me start with the first one. What we are calling capital ground. Let me start with the first one. What we are calling capital ground. Now listen. How do you account for money that you are receiving towards the construction of an asset or towards the purchase of an asset? Listen. Let me assume first that you as a company, you bought a motor vehicle or a machine. Let's call it a machinery for maybe 50 million. You bought a machine for 50 million. But towards the purchase of this machine, you received a grant of 10 million. You received a grant of 10 million. That's what we are calling a capital grant. So how do you account for this 10 million being a capital grant, a grant relating to assets? Now, there are two methods. There are two methods of accounting for this grant. Number one, one method of accounting for this grant, listen, is to offset Against the 50 million that you have paid, you offset the 10 million. For example, let me put it in terms of accounting. You bought that machine for 50 million. You debited machinery and you credited cash by 50 million. That's what you did as a company. Then you received this grant of 10 million. You can decide to debit cash and credit machinery by that 10 million. Then from there, you now remain with the balance of the machinery worth 40 million. That 40 million is what you are now going to be showing in your books as an asset. And you depreciate it at 40, not 50. Are you there now? So we are saying one method of accounting for the 10 million is to offset the 10 million against the cost of the asset so as to determine the carrying amount of the asset that we shall be depreciating it from now onwards. From now onwards. Are you there now? Good. So that's one method. So in your books, listen, in your books, you now depreciate your asset uh, over the use life on 40 million, on 40 million, not 50 million. Are you there? Good. Meaning, once you debit cash with the 10 million and you credit the asset with the 10 million, then you have nothing to do with the 10 million again. No. And therefore, we depreciate that asset on 40 from now onwards. So if the use of life is 10 years, Every year you will be depreciating the asset by 4 million, 4 million, which will be 40 million divided by the use of life of 10 years. That will come to how much? 4 million. That will come to 4 million. That's one method that you can use to account for the grant. That's one method we can use to account for the grant. We are calling it where you offset, where you offset the grant against the original cost of the asset against the original cost of the asset okay good so that's one method the second method let me explain it by doing the illustration again you bought this machine for 10 million or 50 million so you debited machinery by 50 million and you credited cash now listen then you received a 10 million grand to watch the purchase of this machinery. So the second way you can decide as a company to account for the 10 million is to consider that 10 million, listen, as a deferred income. As a deferred income. So in other words, you will debit bank, you are receiving the 10 million, and you credit what we are calling 
deferred grant income or income grant deferred income grant deferred income let's call it that way deferred income or deferred grant income let's call it deferred grant income listen you debit bank by 10 million you credit the asset by 10 million listen carefully now then listen two key important points it means therefore that you will be depreciating your asset over the 50 million now so every year if the use of life is 10 years you will be depreciating that asset by how much by 5 million listen then listen carefully now this 10 million grant that you received you are considering it as a deferred income listen deferred income to be recognized as an income in the income statement or in the profit and loss over the useful life of the asset so from this deferred income account you will be transferring part of that amount to the p and l to the p and l listen so every year because the use of life is 10 years therefore over 10 years that 10 million will be recognized as an income as an income in the p and l account for over a period of 10 years so every year you will be transferring how much to the p and account by end of year one you will take to the p and account how much one million if we have the use of life being 10 years so 10 million divided by 10 years that gives you every year you recognize 1 million then you carry down the balance of how much 9 million that balance of 9 million is the one to be considered as a deferred income so in the second year you bring it down you also now recognize another in year two you recognize another 1 million to the PN account. You transfer 1 million to the PN account, then you carry down a balance of 8 million. You bring it down by the beginning of year 3, balance brought down. That will be 8 million. To the third year again, you recognize an income to the PN account of 1 million. Then you carry down the balance of 7 million. That will let me do for 4 years, and that will mean you will have understood. Bring down the balance by the beginning of the fourth year balance brought down that is seven then you carry down or you take to the p and account another one million to the you defer an income of eight no seven six sorry six by end of year four so this is how you can deal listen to this this is how you can deal with the second way of dealing with the capital grant you consider it as a deferred income to be recognized in the profit and loss as an income over the use of life of the asset over the use of life of the asset okay that is the second method of accounting for capital grant what have i said about method one method one i told you you can decide to offset original cost of the asset you offset the grant against the original cost of the asset so that you remain with the net or you determine the current amount of the asset then i said the asset will now be depreciated on 40 million over the remaining useful life so for that 10 million once you debit cash and you credit the asset listen you have nothing to do with the 10 million from there onwards no after the first year you debit bank credit asset that grant disappears okay but for the second method i've said the asset will still remain at 50 the original cost you bought that big machinery at 50 you debited machinery you credited cash then you received a grant towards the purchase of that motor vehicle or that machinery so you decide 
you're going to consider that 10 million as a deferred income. You defer that income to be recognized as an income in the PL account over the use of life of the asset. Over the use of life of the asset. So every year you keep transferring. Okay. We shall look at later how to account for it in the PL account and in the balance sheet. Okay. Maybe what I could say, let me just put it. Maybe let me just put it. If you are told to prepare profit and loss, some questions might tell you, listen, a question might tell you, prepare profit and loss extracts for the first three years. So to the PL account, this is PL account extracts. Year one. No, let's call it year. Year one, year two, year three. Listen, listen carefully. Every year, you will be depreciating your asset. So there will be a depreciation charge. I'm talking about the second method now. Then every year, there will be that deferred income which you recognized as an income that year. Which you will recognize as an income that year. So every year, my machine had a cost of 50 million. The use of life was 10 years. So every year, I'll be depreciating it by 5 million. That's what I'll be depreciating. We are assuming you're using straight line method. Then every year, I am recognizing how much in the income statement. Every year, from the deferred income account, I'm transferring 1 million, 1 million, 1 million. So I take to the PN account every year how much an income of 1 million, 1 million. Are you there now? That's how the income statement or the PL account will be affected by the second method. Look at the balance sheet now. If you are to prepare balance sheet extracts, if you are to prepare balance sheet extracts, I'm talking about the second method, year one, year two, year three. So you will have among your non current assets, among the fixed assets, you will have machinery at cost. Machinery at cost, which is how much? 50. You less accumulated depreciation of how much? 5. That will give you a book value of how much? 45. Second year, cost will be 50. Accumulated depreciation of 10, that gives you 40. Third year, that will be 50. Accumulated depreciation of 15, that gives you 35. Good. Now, that is as far as asset side of the balance sheet is concerned. Listen, remember, listen carefully. You have what we are calling a deferred income. You received, listen carefully now, you received 10 million to be recognized as an income in the next 10 years. To be recognized as an income in the next 10 years. Listen. So we can say this is an income that has been received in advance. And any income you know from your accounting, any income received in advance is obviously considered as a liability. Any income received in advance is considered as a liability. Good. But I want you to watch. So among the non-current liabilities, non-current liabilities, among your non-current liabilities long term, there we will also have deferred grant income. Listen carefully. Then, this is grant income. Then somewhere along your current liabilities, you will also have what we are calling deferred grant income. Let's go back to the table. This account, we argue. Listen carefully. By end of year one, from my table here, from my account, I was carrying down how much? 9 million. Listen carefully. Out of that 9 million, which is to be recognized as an income in the next nine years. Listen, out of that nine million, there is a one million which will be recognized as an income in the next one year. I hope you are getting. 
out of this 9 million, there is this 1 million which will be recognized as an income in the next one year. So it means, therefore, out of the 9 million by end of year 1, there is another balance of 8 million to be recognized as an income from now within a period of more than a year. We are at the end of year 1. We have received an income in advance of 9 million. But out of that 9 million, in the next one year, we will have recovered 1 million from it. That means we would have realized 1 million from it. So there is another 8 million out of 9, which will take me more than one year to recognize it as an income. You see? So it means, therefore, in my balance sheet of year 1, how much will be considered as a long-term liability? It is out of the nine, eight million will be now be considered as a long-term liability. That leaves me with a balance of one million to be considered as a current liability. You go back again and check for the second year. Second year, we are carrying down a balance of how much now? Eight. Within the next one year, I should recognize out of the eight, I should recognize this one million. So it also means, therefore, that out of this eight million, there is another seven million which will take me more than a year to recognize, which will take me more than a year to recognize. Are you there now? Good. So out of the eight that we are carrying down by end of year one, how much will be considered as long term? It will be obvious, 7. How much will be considered as current? 1. We are cutting down, by end of year 2, we carry down 8 million. I hope you remember, from my account, that's what we carry down. And I'm saying, in the next one year, we should recognize 8 million. So by end of year 2, that 1 million that I'm going to recognize in the next one year, becomes a current component out of the 8. The other 7 million that will take me more than a year to recognize, I take it to my balance sheet as a long-term liability. Good. Third year. Third year, we carry down how much? We carry down 7. We carry down 7. Out of this 7, how much will take me more than a year to recognize? And how much of it will take me less than a year to recognize? In the next one year, I should recognize how much? Seven. Ah, uh, one, sorry. In the next one year, I should recognize one. So it means, therefore, out of the seven million, six million will take me more than a year to recognize. So six million in the balance sheet of year two, sorry, in the balance sheet of year three will be long term. And in the third year, one million will be current. I hope you have noticed something. Listen. That when I was doing the balance sheet of year one, whatever was the carry down by end of year two, look at the account, whatever was carried down by end of year two, when I was doing year one here, when I was doing year one here, whatever I was carrying down by end of year two, which is eight, that became the liability long term year one. Okay? Then when I was doing my balance sheet of year two, Whatever was carrying down as a liability by end of year three, that became long term by end of year two. Hope you are following. Okay. Third year, when I was doing my balance sheet of year three, I saw I was carrying down seven million. So I had to ask myself how much is long term. Out of the seven million, whatever I'm carrying down the, as a liability in the fourth year, that is what becomes long term in the third year. That's what becomes long term in the third year. So this is the method we are calling. That is where you defer. You consider the grant as a deferred income. You consider the grant as a deferred income. Good. Let me talk about the second method now. Or the second type of grant. I've talked about the first one. That is which one? Capital grant or grant relating to assets. When you receive a grant towards the normal running expenses of the business, when you receive grant 
relating to income. Meaning, you are receiving a grant to help you pay the normal running expenses of your business. Listen, then, for that second type of grant, just take it to the PL account as an, as an income. So the second one, you take it or you credit PL account as an income. That's all we can say. Consider no concerning the revenue grant. That when you receive it, you just debit cash, credit PL account, credit PL account as an income. Okay. Other books will account for it also this way. You may decide. Listen carefully that you receive this grant towards the payment of electricity. You receive a grant towards payment of electricity. So if the cost of the electricity was 5 million and you received a grant of 2 million, then another way to account for the 2 million is to net it against that specific expense. So that you take to the PL account an expense of how much? 3 million. Otherwise, take the 5 million to the PL account as an expense. That's okay. Take the 2 million to the PL account as an income. That's okay. Overall, it's a net of 3. Alternatively, we are saying you can also decide take the 2 million, net it against the specific expense. Then the balance is what you take to the PL account. Yeah. But it's easier to say, if you are receiving grant relating to income, just consider it as an income in the p and okay? That's better. Consider it as an income in the p and account and you credit P, p and Good. That is the only treatment for revenue grant. Number three, grant which we call non-monetary grant. You receive land, you receive a building, you receive a motor vehicle from the government. How do you account for it? You are only required, listen, you are required to account for it at its fair value. Show it in the books at its fair value. What is the market value? Bring it into the books at its market value. Bring it into the books at its market value. Good. Let's put down the accounting treatment for the grants. So have another subheading, have another subheading, accounting treatment. Accounting treatment for government grants. 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 Number one, or subheading, capital grant. As a subheading, you can write capital grant, capital grant, capital grant. Then you say this, under the subtopic of capital grant, you say this, there are two methods. There are two methods of accounting for capital grant. There are two methods of accounting for capital grant. There are two methods of accounting for capital grant. One. 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 Present. Number one. Method one. Present. The grant. Present the grant as a deferred. Present the grant as a deferred income. Present the grant as a deferred income. Comma, which is recognized as a deferred income, which is recognized as an income, which is recognized as an income over the use of life of the asset, which is considered as an income or recognized as an income over the use of life of the asset. Over the use of life of the asset. Number two, another method, two, 
deduct. Number two, deduct the grand. Number two, deduct the grand in arriving. Deduct the grand amount, put it that way. Deduct the grant amount in arriving. Deduct the grant amount in arriving. In arriving at the carrying value. In arriving at the carrying value. In arriving at the carrying value of the asset. In arriving at the carrying value of the asset. In arriving at the current value of the asset, i.e., i.e., the amount of the grant, the amount of the grant is offset. The amount of the grant is offset against. The amount of the grant is offset against the original cost of the asset against the original cost of the asset the original cost of the asset another paragraph another paragraph the asset the asset will be depreciated the asset will be depreciated over its useful life the asset will be depreciated over its useful life. The asset will be depreciated over its useful life. Asset will be depreciated over its useful life on the reduced amount. On the reduced amount. The asset is depreciated over its useful life on the reduced amount. On the reduced amount on the reduced amount next we are through with the two methods let's have another subheading have another subheading revenue grant revenue grant revenue grant revenue grant revenue grant Then you see this. Treat this grant as an income. Treat this grant as an income in the profit and loss. Treat this grant as an income in the profit and loss. Treat this grant as an income in the profit and loss. Treat this grant as an income in the profit and loss. Treat this grant as an income in the profit and loss. That's all we can say. Another one, another subheading, non-monetary grant. Non-monetary grant as another subheading, non-monetary grant. Non-monetary grant. Non-monetary grant. And monetary grant. This should be valued. This should be valued at its fair value. 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 Good. I think now we are through. We can now do an example. We want to do an example now for each of these types of grant. So let's put down an example. Copy this simple example now. We want to talk about how I've already discussed a few or I've in brief how to account for them. But let's put down something now. Let's put down an example. Example. And you can example on revenue grants. 
put down an example and you say example on revenue grant example on revenue grant example on revenue grant example on revenue grant then you say this put down this example abc limited abc limited a manufacturing company abc limited a manufacturing company is seeking for government assistance is seeking for government assistance is seeking for government assistance we stop the company the company secured the company secured a number of grants the company secured a number of grants from the government from the government from the government The following transactions took place. The following transactions took place in the current year. The following transactions took place in the current year. The following transactions took place in the current year. Number one. Number one. Number one. ABC Limited. ABC Limited has been awarded has been awarded a grant has been awarded a grant of shillings 90 million of shillings 90 million to be received to be received over 3 years to be received over three years to be received over three years in respect of in respect of in respect of providing employment in respect of providing employment in respect of providing employment to fresh graduates to fresh graduates to fresh graduates that's number one number two another transaction two abc limited abc limited received Shillings five million received shillings five million grant received shillings five million grant for initial training for initial training of its employees for initial training of its employees initial training of each employees yeah required opportunity and the required required so how so how abc limited would account so how abc limited would account for the above transactions in the financial statements show how abc limited would account the above transactions in the financial statements okay so now let me talk about the first one listen listen carefully the first one we are saying you were awarded a grant of 90 million to be received 
to be received in the next three years. And you are receiving this grant towards employment of graduates. That means to pay. You are given the condition towards the training of graduates. That means to pay for normal salaries and wages for those graduates. So it's a revenue grant. But you are given or you will be awarded, you have been awarded 90 million to be received over the next three years. So it means overall, listen, it is obvious to assume that you are going to receive 30 million every year. 30 million every year. You take it on a straight line basis. So because we are doing year one, how much will be the grant I'm going to receive towards the employment of these graduates? It's obvious 30 million. It's obvious 30 million. So we are saying for number A, we are putting down the answer now. We are putting down the answer, same IV. The amount to be recognized, the amount to be recognized as an income, the amount to be recognized as an income each year, the amount to be recognized as an income each year would be 90 million divided by three years. So that would be 30 million. So that's what you're going to receive every year. You are awarded a grant of 90 million to be received over the next three years. Just put down the double entry, debit cash, 30 million, credit p and account. You debit cash or bank, 30 million, and the credit p and L account. That's all. So you are not receiving the 90 all at once. You are awarded 90 to be received over the next three years. So every year you are receiving 30. 30. You are not receiving the 90, all of it, so that you consider it as a deferred income. No. At the point there. Good. The second one is okay. You received a grant of how much? 5 million. Towards the training of your employees. That's another expense. Training expenses. That's a normal running expense of the business. So you will debit bank again. So number two. That one has no problem. Number two. Debit bank, 5 million, credit p and account, by 5 million. You're considering it as an income, straight. So those ones have no problem. You just debit bank, you credit p and account, or revenue grant. So we are just putting down those two examples for the sake of understanding. Otherwise, we have just said, simple. If it's a revenue grant, consider it as an income. I want us to do another example now on capital grant. Let's do an example now on capital grant. Let's do an example. So, Andika, another subheading. Example on capital grant. Example on capital grant. Example on capital grant. Then you say this, ABC Limited, put down this, ABC Limited received a grant, ABC Limited received a grant of shillings 20 million, ABC Limited received a grant of shillings 20 million towards the purchase, ABC Limited received a grant of shillings 20 million towards the purchase of a machine towards the purchase of a machine costing shillings 100 million costing shillings 100 million the machine you know the machine has a use of life of five years Machine has a use of life of five years. With machine has a use of life of five years with a residual value. With a residual value of shillings 10 million. With a residual value of shillings 10 million. With a residual value 
of shillings 10 million required 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 show the profit and loss show the profit and loss and balance sheet extracts show the profit and loss and balance sheet extracts for the first three years for the first three years show the profit and loss and balance sheet extracts the first three years using using the two approaches using the two approaches or accounting for using the two approaches of accounting for the grand using the two approaches for accounting for the grand okay using the two approaches for accounting for the grand okay so let's use method one so andika method one where we have said grand considered as a deferred income grant considered as a deferred income that is method one grant considered as a deferred income you received a grant of 20 million it has a use of life of five years let's prepare our deferred income account so that we get the charges to go to the PL account and in the balance sheet so open an account called deferred income we are doing for the first three years listen we are doing for the first three years so you need a longer account so this is deferred grant income deferred grant income deferred grant income so you come and see a year one you received 20 million so you debit bank by 20 million you credit deferred income grant by cash 20 million then the use of life being five years i told you you now transfer from the pnl account you now from this account to the pnl account how much every year 20 million divided by five that is four million you come and see here to your PNL account by end of year one, the PNL account that will be four million. That will be four million. You think you'll forget how we are getting that four million? We are getting it by taking 20 M divided by five years. That's how we are getting that four million to be recognized as an income every year. Good. Then we carry down a balance of how much? Balance carry down. We carry down 16. We bring it down by the beginning of year 2. Balance brought down. That is 16. Then we bring it. Say again. Second year. We transfer how much? The PL account in year 2. We transfer another 4. We have discussed all this. We carry down a balance of how much now? We carry down a balance of 12. We bring it down by the beginning of year three. Balance brought down. That is 12. Then I say to the PNL account again, another four. Then I carry down a balance of how much? Eight. That is all we are told to prepare for the three years. Finish. I want to do PNL extracts and balance sheet extracts for the three years. We have accounted for the grant as a deferred income. As a deferred income. Okay. So finish copying. We want to do the balance sheet and PL extracts now. Uh, 
Okay, fine. So for P and L extracts, let's do it. Uh, we come and see your profit and loss extracts. We need a column for the year, a column for depreciation charge. Don't forget you are depreciating the asset. And you need a column for the deferred income or grand income. Grand income. Year one, year two, year three. I want you to listen carefully now. I want you to listen carefully. This machine had a cost of how much? A hundred million. Listen. This machine had a cost of a hundred million. Listen. With, with a residual value of how much? Ten million. You all know how to depreciate an asset. When you are depreciating an asset, you normally take the cost of the asset, you less the scrap value or what we call the residual value, you divide that by the use of life. I hope you know that. Good. So the trick here was that you are given the residual value. If we did not have the residual value, you just take the cost divided by the use of life. I hope you are following. But now that we have a residual value of 10 million, we take the cost of 100 minus the residual value, you divide that by the use of life. So how much does it come to? Maybe we can show how we are getting it here. We are taking the cost of 100 million minus 10 million. We divide that by the use of life of five years. What do we get as the charge per annum? What do we get as the charge per annum? We are taking a hundred minus the residual value of ten divided by the use of life of five years. That gives me eighteen million every year. Eighteen million. 18 million and 18 million. So put it that way. That's how we are getting the depreciation charge. Grand income, we have already discussed it. Grand income, we have already discussed it. The use of life was five years. The grand was 20 million. Recognized over the same use of life of five years. So every year we recognize 4 million to the p &L account. Good. So having said that, now you come and recognize 4 million. 4 million every year. That's the PL extracts. That's the PL extracts. Now we go to the balance sheet extracts. Now we go to the balance sheet extracts now. So we come and see your balance sheet extracts. Or what you can call statement of financial position extracts. Need a column for year one. Year two, year three. I told you among the non current assets, among the non current assets, you will have an asset called machinery at cost. The cost was a hundred million. You less accumulated depreciation. First year we charge 18. So that leaves me with a book value of something like 82, if I'm right. Good. Second year, 100. Accumulated depression of 36. That leaves me with about 64. I hope I'm right. Yes. Third year, cost is 100. Accumulated depression 18 times 3. That's about 54 leaving me with a book value of 46. Good. That is as far as the asset side of the balance sheet is concerned. We 
come to the liability side we come and see here non-current liabilities deferred grant income we have already discussed this among the current liabilities then you have deferred grant income okay we have already discussed this i told you what do you consider as long term by end of year one it is what you are carrying down by end of year two that's what we are saying will become then the next amount you are going to recognize as an income in the next one year that becomes the current now so we can even go back to the table go back to the account sorry we carry down how much by end of year one i carry down 16 by end of year one here out of that 16 i'm going to recognize 4 million in the next one year so out of the 16 i'm remaining with 12 to be recognized as a liability or which will be recognized as an income sorry in a period of more than one year from now so it's like i've received an income in advance for a period of more than a year that's long-term liability so out of 16 that we are carrying down 12 will be considered as a current as long term sorry will be considered as long term for the next one year i'm going to recognize 4 million that becomes current so in the next one year i should recognize 4 million the p and account out of 16 12 will take me more than a year to recognize 4 will take me less than a year to recognize i go back i see what i'm carrying down by end of year 2 by end of year 2 we were carrying down 12 again out of that 12 how much will take me more than a year to recognize obvious i told you it's what you are carrying down by end of year 3 so that automatically becomes 8 so in the second year your long term is 8 out of 12 then out of 12 4 million will take you less than a year to recognize 4 million will take you less than a year to recognize 4 million becomes current finally in the third year i know i carry down 8 million out of the 8 million 4 million will be recognized within the next one year the other 4 million will take me more than a year to recognize okay so that means 4 million will take me two more years to go i am at the end of the third year okay that will take me 4 million another 4 million will be current are you there now good so we are through with the balance sheet extracts well come summer for three years so by the end of the third year i'm carrying down for eight million out of that eight million four million must be recognized within the next one year it means the other four million will take me more than a year to recognize good so we are through with the first approach we are accounting for this transaction which is a capital and we are accounting for it using the two approaches finish we want to go to the second approach now where we want to account for the grant as what as a net set of good against the cost of the asset okay so andika method two or approach number two this was method what what were we calling it is it a method or approach method one this was method one so we can come and say method two we can come and see a method two so call it this way method two call it this way where the grant call it this way where the grant is deducted where the grant is deducted from the original cost or from the initial cost be that way where the grant is deducted from the initial cost of the asset 
where the grant is deducted from the initial cost of the asset in determining in determining the carrying amount of the asset in determining the carrying amount of the asset in determining the carrying amount of the asset so let's determine the carrying amount carrying amount now The original cost was 100 million. We minus the 20 million grant that we received. So if we had a grant of 20 million was the purchase of an asset which cost 100 million, then if we are using this second approach, we are remaining with a cost of 80 million. And that's what you are going to depreciate your asset with or on. Good. So let's prepare PNL. And balance sheet. Listen, so this time, as far as PL account is concerned, we are only going to charge one thing. Hope you are getting. As far as PL account is concerned, we are only going to charge one thing, and that is depre depreciation. Nothing like an income. No. All of the 20 million was offset against the cost. So I just debited cash, I credited the asset. That's what we are saying. Good. So let's prepare PL extracts. So we have a column for the year and a column for depreciation charge. So year one, year two, year three. Get the point again. Get the point again. Get the point again here. Listen. Listen. Yes, we are supposed to depreciate it on 80. But don't forget there was that residual value. So once you have a residual value, you normally have to determine what we call the depreciable amount. The depreciable amount. So this means, let me just show somewhere here, it will be 80 minus the residual value was 10. We divide that by the use of life of how many years? Five. You remain with a net cost of 80. Are you following? Good. You minus the residual value of 10. Get the amount we call the depreciable amount. Then you divide that by the use of life. So what does it come to? So in this second method, the depreciable amount is now 70 divided by 5. That comes to 14. So every year, you depreciate your asset by 14. By 14 million every year. Good. That's all. Nothing goes to the PL account as an income. No. So we do the balance sheet extracts now. Balance sheet extracts. Year one, year two, year three. We start with non current assets. Non current assets. We come and see here machinery at cost. The cost is not a hundred. At the point, the cost is not a hundred now. We are considering the cost as eighty. Then we less accumulated depreciation, which is 14 every year. That will leave me with a book value of 60 what? 66. That will leave me with a book value of 66. Second year, again 80 minus 28. That will leave me with 2. That is 7, 5, 52. Third year. That will be 80 minus what? 14 times 3. That's about 42. That will leave me with 8. 3. Good. 38. Okay. Listen. This time, there is nothing like deferred income in the balance sheet. Get the point? We have netted the 20 
offset it against the cost. So there is nothing to go to the balance sheet as a deferred income, whether long term or current. I hope you are getting. So in this second approach, only the asset will appear in the balance sheet. Nothing like as a deferred income. No. So that brings me, listen, that brings me to the end of that short topic called accounting for government grants. Listen, most of your questions at this level now will normally test you on the theory parts, on the theory part of the question. But if they give you a question to calculate, you can still do it. I've explained how to account for, I've explained how to account for the three types of grant. What was number one? Number one was the capital grant. Number two, revenue grant. Number three, non-monetary grant. I told you what's a capital grant is grant relating to what? Assets. The grant that a company would receive to watch the purchase of an asset or construction of a long-term asset. Number two, what's a revenue grant? Grant that is received towards meeting the general running expenses of your business. Okay, that is what we call revenue grant or grant relating to what? Towards income. Okay, then I've told you how do you account for them? Just consider it as an income in the PNR account. Then, number three, we have talked about non monetary grant where you receive an asset like machinery, motor vehicle, land, building. How do you account for it? Just value it at its fair value. Those three, those methods, you should know them and how they should be accounted for. Okay? Even when you are given a theory question, how you account, what's a grant? We have received, we have said a grant is a transfer. Said it's an assistance that you receive from the government in terms of transfer of what? Resources. Any assistance you are receiving from the government in form of transfer of resources, that's what we are calling a government grant. Then we have talked about the three types of grant and now we are through with how to account for each grant. So that's all about the topic. So for today we can stop there. We pick it up from there next time. We pick it up from there next time when we shall start a new topic. Otherwise, listen, for the students who are new, I've told you, please subscribe. Even if you are not a new student and you have not subscribed, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. This will help you to get notified whenever we post videos to the YouTube channel for free. Okay, good. The other thing I've said, for some of you who have not joined classes, either for financial reporting like the one we are doing now, or advanced financial reporting for your friends who you can tell, or for financial accounting, I told you, you can, if you want to join the no online classes, you can call me and Call me on 0722-658875. 0722-658875. I also told you, if you can't fit in an online class, you can also buy what we call pre-recorded videos, where you get the videos for the whole syllabus all at once, and then you can watch them at your own free time. Somebody saying, pardon, from non-current liability balance sheet. What do you mean from non-current? I said, I don't know whether you are referring to method one or method two. Edward, what are you asking? Are you referring to method one or method two? Method two, I told you there is no liability there is nothing you are going to account for as a liability. When you received the 20 million, you had to offset it against the cost of the building or the cost of the machinery. The original cost was 800 million. So using this method too, which I'm hoping you are talking about, 
I took the cost of 100 million here, I had to minus the grant. So you remained method one. Okay, method one. Ah, yeah. Method one, non current. Here. You go back to the table, to the account. Here. You are asking for long term. Here. We are carrying down how much? 16 million by end of year one, which will be brought down by the beginning of year two. Then in the second year, you will recognize to the income statement another how much? Oh. So I told you, if you receive the grant of 20 million and you are going to account for it as an income over the next five years, so it means every year you must recognize an income of 4 million. 20 million divided by 5, that's 4 million. I hope that point is clear. So from year 1, I recognize 4 million to the PNL account. 16 million is an income I'm receiving in advance. First, that's a one point. 16 million is an income I've received in advance. But out of that 16 million, there is another 4 million I'm going to recognize within the next one year as an income. Out of this 16, I hope David is following, Edward, sorry. Out of that 16, there is a 4 million which must be recognized every year, every year, every year. Are you there? So out of 16, there is a 4 million that will take me less than a year to recognize as an income. So it means, therefore, out of this 16, 4 million will take me less than a year it leaves me automatically with a balance of how much? 12. To be recognized as an income in the next more than a year. It will take you more than a year to recognize the 12 million. Okay? That's what you did. When you came to year 2, you carried down another how much? 12 million. Out of this 12 million, we have agreed. Every year you must recognize 4 million. So within the next one year, you must recognize how much? 4 million. It means what? Out of the 12, there is another 8 million which will take you more than one year to recognize as an income. Then out of this 8 that I carry down by end of year 3, there is a 4 million that I must recognize within the next one year. 4 million. So it leaves me with another 4 million which will take me more than a year recognize as an income so when i'm doing my balance sheet of year one i have told you the 12 million will go to the balance sheet as an uncurrent liability 4 million will go to the balance sheet of year one as a current liability second year out of the 12 of 8 million will go to the balance sheet as an uncurrent long term and 4 million will go to the balance sheet as current out of the 8 million I carry down by end of year 3, 4 million I look at it as long term, then 4 million I look at it as current. That's what we did in the balance sheet. So I, when I was doing balance sheet of year 1, we saw the total liability was 16 here, was this 16, the OEO. We have already split it here now, 12 will take me more than a year, 4 will take me less than a year. So 4 million, you take it to the balance sheet of year 1 as current. 12, the balance, you take it to the balance sheet as a, car, as a law, long term. Then you realize by end of year 2, we carry down how much? We carry down this 12, which I've now splitted. 8 will take me less than a, more than a year to recognize. 4 will take me more than a year, uh, less than a year to recognize. So that's what we are saying. So 8 million goes to the balance sheet as long term, 4 million goes to the balance sheet as current. Then you did the fourth year, a third year, sorry, what did you carry down? 8 million. You already know, obvious, out of the 8 million, 4 million must be recognized within the next one year. So it leaves you with a pay, an amount of another 4 million, which will take you more than a year to recognize. So in the fourth year, a third year, sorry, you take to the long term, 4 million, and current 4 million. Are you okay now, David? Edward, sorry?
Are you okay now, Edward? You chat and say yes. Or you are still having issues. I hope now you are okay, Edward. Edward, we are waiting. Ah, I'm okay. Fine. You are okay now. Thank you. Okay. So let's stop for there for today. I hope you have understood. Let's hope stop there for today. We pick it up from there next time. But the other issue I was mentioning is that residual value. Remember the residual value. The examiner was trying to introduce it. Now, the examiner was trying to introduce it so that you confuse how to compute the charge called depre depreciation. Good. So whenever there is a residual value, you normally take the cost, you minus the residual value. If there is no residual value, you just take cost divided by the useful line. Otherwise, see you next time. Bye for now. Bye for now. Those who have not subscribed, I've told you, please subscribe. Those who have not joined the normal class or online classes, please join. Those are for the other details, I told you, you can call the timings and so on. For advanced financial reporting, sorry, for advanced financial reporting, we normally have early morning or evening classes. For advanced, we have early morning or evening classes. That's for your friends. Otherwise, see you next time. Bye for now. Bye. Bye to you.